Uh, Daredevil is the first uh, Netflix series about Marvel stories. Um, is there some kind of Bible uh, you had from the start with to establish the whole Netflix Marvel things? Uh, I, I wish there were a Bible. <laughs> uh, well, you wrote it, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Drew, Drew Goddard, uh, you know, he wrote the first two episodes, and, and he had a broad stroke layout for where he thought the season was going. Uh, but it was just, you know, that first season of Daredevil, just us. Um, there was no bigger picture yet with uh, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, The Defenders. Uh, so we were just starting to work on that, uh, especially with regard to The Defenders. We knew that there were, I felt like we should start setting some stuff up, laying little hints of what might be coming. So we did a lot of talking about that. Uh, first, congratulations for the role. Um, Thank you. I think you discovered Daredevil just before making this the comics and all the things. So what aspect of the character I talked to the most when you were discovering the whole mythology of Daredevil? Um, well, you know, it's uh, one of the things I've said before is that when I got the role, I hadn't read any Daredevil mm -hmm. comics. So uh, that was a whole new experience to me to, for me to immerse myself in the, in the comic book history of the character. Um, uh, but it also meant that I was able to look at the scripts and, and decide which comics best represented the script that w the scripts that were being written so I I, I had a I, I could kind of co concentrate on the, the ones that tonally reflected the show um, so to answer your question you know I I was really I thought it I was really interested in this uh, in someone who is frightened by what they're capable of um, and I think something we deal with in our, in our show with Matt Murdock is that he's aware of, 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 of what a weapon he can be and how effective he can be at vigilante justice. Um, but at the same time, he's terrified of what he might do. And he tries to set himself ba barriers and boundaries that he will never cross in order to give himself some sort of a sense of security around his actions. But he, I think he finds it increasingly hard to not overstep the mark and cross a line that he promises himself he'll never cross. And I, I just think as a character trait, it's very, it's an interesting for a superhero because it feels very human. It feels very, um, it feels very fallible. And, uh, and I think hopefully uh, people will relate more to a superhero who, who is flawed. Yeah. Um, the Dev Devil character has gone through many versions, a colorful one from the 60s to mm -hmm. the thriller one from Bendis and of course Frank Miller. When you were developing the show, how much freedom did you have uh, in picking from these different versions? Well, we had a lot of freedom of what version of Daredevil we would pick from. And we were really, I, I've grown up reading Daredevil all my life. Uh, so, you know, we wanted to really take the spirit of a little bit of everything, but I was mostly influenced by the Frank Miller runs, the very gritty runs, um, things like, you know, Born Again and uh, The Man Without Fear, the whole Electra Bullseye run and the uh, Brian Michael Bendis, Alex Maleev run more recently, which I thought was beautiful and really captured the tone and the look of the show that I wanted to do. Um, so we had, we had absolute freedom of, of just taking the influences that we loved. Of course, you have training for making this. Yeah. Uh, how, did you, with, how did you work with the ex experts of combat and consider uh, the blindness of the character for the fights? Yeah, it's very tricky. Um, so, uh, you know, I had an am we had an amazing stunt team. Um, Phil Silvera is the stunt coordinator, and, and my stunt double was a, an amazing uh, uh, gymnast and martial artist called Chris Brewster. Um, and I, of course, I wanted to do as much of the, of the, of the um, physical stuff as possible, as much of the action sequences as possible. So, so uh, which and was, at times was quite a lot. You know, they, they were quite, they were quite um, uh, accommodating in that department. Um, uh, so, but it was just a lot of tra training with him and technique and learning the fights and learning the moves and, and trying to get like six or seven pieces together in one slot that I could learn and then we could shoot that and then we could move on and I could learn another six or seven moves at a time, you know, because I very rarely had the opportunity to learn the entire fight um, for time reasons. Um, and, and also there's also there's moves, uh, there's things that my stunt double could do that I could never do. So obviously that stuff, you know, was, was all him. Um, and in terms of the blindness, you know, it's very tricky because obviously, obviously for the, in the fight sequences, you, you know, you've got punches and kicks coming at you left, right and center and you have to kind of, you know, uh, defend yourself appropriately. Um, 
But the thing we talked about was that just to remember that, just to remember the idea that Daredevil would never ever use his eyes to see anything, whether it's a weapon that he could use or if it's a punch coming in or if there's someone behind him, he would never need to look in order to, to, to find that person, you know? And that was something that we just wanted to make, remember at the back of our minds so that if, when an opportunity arose, we could use it. Uh, talking about the way uh, the character feels his environment, uh, the vision of fire we can see in the show seems very different from the rather senses we have in the comic books. Um, mm -hmm. How do you figure out this new aesthetic of Daredevil's vision? Uh, you know, we, we were trying to make this as gritty and grounded as realistic as possible, and we started talking about uh, you know the sonar sense of Daredevil. And uh, uh, the more and more we talked about it, uh, the biggest hiccup that I felt was that, you know, the need to make a sound to see what your environment was, uh, was kind of counterproductive to the story we were trying to tell, where if he's sneaking around, the last thing you want to do is make a sound to let the other guys know yeah. you're there. And we were looking for more of a metaphor of what he's feeling and what he's going through, and we started talking about, you know, all these different senses and how they would combine to give him an impression of the world. And, and, and that's when I thought of the phrase, uh, he sees a world on fire. And Claire has that great response, if I saw everything on fire, I'd want to hit people too. So it's, it's also a metaphor for you know, the, the conflict within Matt that you know, everything is, is just in a con conflagration. Uh, the devil is the man without fear. So uh, how did you choose to process the fear element into the parts? Well, I, you know, I, the, one of the, again, one of the things I've talked about a little bit is I was concerned about this idea of uh, playing the man without fear just because I didn't think it's very interesting to watch someone over 13 hours um, devoid of fear, you know, it, it doesn't, it, it, I'm not sure it's a very compelling character. And also it robs you of something which I think is really important if you're playing a, a hero of sorts, which is courage and bravery. I think we need to see that in, in our heroes. Um, so I thought that maybe the man without fear, I, I, I like the idea that this is something that the public label him with. They see what he does, they see the great feats and the, and, and, and the courage that he shows, and so they label him the man without fear. But actually, we, when we meet Matt Murdock, we meet someone who's very afraid, like the rest of us is afraid. Um, but he des the difference being that he decides every day, he decides he's going to do something about it. Okay. Yeah, you, you know, the title Man Without Fear, it's really impossible to do, a, to do a show like this where the character doesn't have some emotional response to what's going on. Um, and, and we always hearken back to, you know, the, the, the great run by Frank Miller, The Man Without Fear, where uh, uh, Wilson Fisk or, or someone at some point says, a man without hope is a man without fear. Um, so that's where really the angle we were going at, that the hopelessness of the situation makes him fearless, uh, rather than he doesn't get scared. Because uh, you know we wanted to make him as human as possible. If someone loved the show and discovered the character for the first time, uh, which comics, which comics will you recommend to it? Oh, Sorry. good question. Um, I think you have to read the Frank Miller Man Without Fear. I think that's uh, an essential. Um, one of my favorites is Daredevil Yellow, uh, yeah. with the Jeff Loeb did with Tim Sale, which I love. But in terms of the tone of our show, uh, I read a lot. I spent a lot of time with uh, Brian Michael Bendis. Alex Maleev run. I think that stuff is uh, the Bendis Maleev and Bendis Mac, you know, end of days, all that stuff. It, the sh it feels like film noir. It feels very close to what the show we tried to make, I think. Uh, it's also my favorite. So. Yeah, great. Uh, we knew that there is a second season coming uh, and you can do it because of your previous right. engagement. If you, can, if you can come back in the future, is it uh, something we can feel? I, I would love to come back in the future. You know, it's, uh, it, was, it was very bittersweet. But when I first signed on to Daredevil, it was with the understanding that I had a feature that I would have to delay to, to help them out in this season and that I would have to go back to it at some point. Um, so, uh, you know, I, and I love the show. I love the cast. I love the crew. I, I would love to be able to come back to this world at some point. Um, not necessarily to take over Daredevil again, because I think it's being run by two great guys now. Um, but who knows, maybe pop back into the Defenders, or come back and, and do something in this world, or maybe something in the feature side. Because I, 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 I grew up loving Marvel. I would love to do more with them. Okay. <laughs>